Alright guys, so before we, you know, part ways, I want to show you some last minute things that you can do to really get things working just top notch on your uh, system here. Now, I'm going to assume that this is a computer that you don't use on a daily basis and that you're more than likely going to stick it in a corner and that it's not a laptop. So what that means is it's a desktop computer that needs a monitor, needs a keyboard for you to use it. And I'm going to show you how to get this thing to, to work so you can actually log in remotely. So first thing you want to do, click on this little gear over here and you want to go down to system settings. From system settings, you're going to see an area that says user accounts. From user accounts, you want to click the unlock button here and from unlock, type in your password. All right, now make sure auto login is set to on, not off. When it's set to on, every time the machine will boot, it will automatically log into the account that you set everything up under. Perfect. Now, now that you have that knocked out, the next thing you want to do is open up your virtual box. So here's my virtual box. Next thing you want to do is right click on your virtual box for the um, smooth wall and tell it to create a shortcut to desktop. Right click on the one for clear OS and tell it that you want to create a shortcut to desktop. All right. Now, I know you're wondering, why are we doing this piece? Well, the thing is, is that when the machine reboots on its own, they're automatically going to be powered off. And what we're going to do is run a small batch script. And what that's going to do is automatically turn these things on for us so that let's say you lose power. All you do is power it back on. The machine will automatically log in and turn on your smooth wall and your clear OS without you having to touch a thing. So how do we do that? Well, you're going to go ahead and open up, type the word G, it should bring up a text editor that's known as G edit. You're going to right click on your smooth wall and go to properties. And you're going to see this thing here. This is the command that's run to pull up smooth wall. Now, I already created my scripts, so I'm just going to open it up and show you what they look like. Open up both of those. Boom. So clear OS, you want to do the uh, number sign, hashtag, exclamation point, slash, bin, slash, bash, all lowercase. And then from there, I type the word echo, open quote, this is a cell script to start clear OS, close quote. And then what I did is I copied this command and paste it right under that. Same thing here with the smooth wall. This is to start the smooth wall. Now, I know what you're thinking, why, why, what's the point? I don't understand. Well, the whole point of it is, is that each one of these are going, it's a small script that's going to tell this thing to turn on. Next thing you're going to do is this. Hit Control Alt T. It's going to pull up your terminal window. Do a LS. There's one, and there. Sorry, there's one here, and there's the other. Now, I want to go ahead and do chmod 755 clear os.sh. Same thing for smoothball. I'm going to do LSAL, and you're going to see that there it is. It has read, write, and execute. It's all correct. All right. So I'm going to clear that off the screen. Next up, you're going to click on this multi button here, and you're going to type startup. There you go, startup applications. And these are the applications that automatically come on when your machine starts up. So from here, you're going to hit add. You're going to click browse, click clear OS. and add. There you go. No description needed. Add again. Browse. Smooth wall. And add. Close out. Go back to it because you want to make sure it's saved. Clear OS. Smooth wall. Now the reason why you want to do it this way, because I tried different ways and there's a lot of like Oh my goodness, there's so many scripts you could be running to get this thing to work. And I find it hard to do because this is supposed to be a very simple way of doing things. And this is the most easiest way of doing it. And the reason why you want two individual scripts is that you want them to load independently. You don't want them in the same script because if, let's say one fails, the other one won't come on. But at least this way, if it, uh, if it fails, you know which one caused it to fail. Just very simple. Um, so close that out. Now, before we 
test it out by rebooting this machine. I've been using this little thing here. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. It's called a VNC viewer. I'll put the link in the description on how to download VNC viewer on, onto your machine. But what I've been using is VNC viewer to actually log into this machine that we're working on because the machine is actually sitting in the corner just doing its own thing. Well, it's an application that you can load on this machine uh, and it requires a password, but I use the unsecure method, which is without a password. But I'm going to tell you how I made that method uh, secure. And what I did is that I used this thing called Putty to actually turn on the VNC application. It's called X11 VNC. Now, I'll get into more on how that actually works, but let's, let's talk about what you need to install to get this little piece to work. What you're gonna do on your command line, type sudo app git install SSH. That's gonna install the remote login application. You're gonna hit enter, you're gonna tell it yes, it's gonna do all the installations or whatever, and it's gonna create the SSH key so that you can log into this machine remotely. Once that's done, you want to make note of what the IP address is of this machine. You can do that by doing ifconfig, and then it tells you right here, this is your IP address. It should be hardware address, inet address, and that's your IP address to this machine. Now, here's how it works. The, um, the next step you're going to have to do from here is you're going to go click on this little guy here, which is your Ubuntu Software Center. It's going to take a little bit here. And then when it loads, you're going to type X11, it's not done yet, X11 VNC, and you want to download this by clicking on it, and then there's some have a little install button here. Click install and let that finish installation. Once it finishes installation, the way this works is when your machine reboots, currently the way we just set it up, the script is going to come on to turn on Smoothball, the script is going to come on to turn on Clear OS, and on top of that, it will not, I repeat, will not start X11, um, the X11 server by default. What's going to happen is you can remote log in via SSH, send the command to turn the application on, which will then turn the application on without a password. The reason why I find this more secure than the one with the password is that the application is turned off by default, which means that you have to actually log into the machine remotely and turn on that server or that service if you don't turn on the service no one can log into that box i find that to be the most secure method of doing it because even though there's no password they have to have the administrator account to log into that box to turn on that application uh, yes granted this machine logs in automatically but it's in your home so the chance of somebody plugging in everything that's few and far between compared to someone logging in remotely and doing it for you now the other part of it, why I put the icons here on the desktop, is you can actually just double click on these to turn them on. So let's say the script stopped working for some reason. You can still have somebody go, hey, you know what? This thing isn't working, it's like your, your, your family member calls or somebody in the office calls, hey, it's not working. Tell them to plug up a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse to your little uh, device there. And when you do, just tell them, hey, double click on something that says Smoothball, then double click on something that says Clear OS. Give it five minutes and you should be good to go. And that's the reason why you want to keep those icons on your desktop. So what we're going to do right now is reboot the machine and then test everything out. I'm going to go ahead and just pause the video and I'm going to restart the video when everything's back up and running. Okay, everything should be up and running. So what you're going to do is download Putty. Um, you can, I'm going to put a link in the description, but just type out download Putty very small application. We're going to type in that IP address, 192.168.211.115. Type in whatever the IP address that you saw on your machine. Hit open. It's going to pop up. You're going to put in your username. And the password. Now I'm in. Then I type x 11 vnc Boom, and that's your little warning that tells you, hey, there's no authentication set up, who cares? Because like I said, this is very secure for somebody who's just using it at home. I also put a link in the description of how to load the VNC viewer. It's a free application, so don't worry about it. You're gonna put in that IP address, colon 5900, which is the IP, I'm sorry, which is the port that you attach it to. I'm gonna hit the connect button, and boom, I am logged in. But once I logged in, check it out. Smoothball is currently running, also, the uh, virtual box is currently running here for the clear os so everything's up and running the machine rebooted logged in no problem 
It's been less than five minutes and we're good to go. Now, some troubleshooting steps. If you run into any issues at all, such as you're finding pages are loading slow or you're having issues on the network, this is actually a very good uh, checks and balances system where it, it verifies the internet and things of that nature. So what you normally do is your standard stuff, reboot your modem, reboot your router. You don't necessarily have to reboot this box. Um, Linux can run, I've had Linux run for four months without needing to be rebooted. So you can run it for months without having to do a reboot. In fact, there are some Linux servers that are actually deployed in corporate networks that haven't been rebooted in over a year. And the reason that you uh, want to have that on your network as far as uh, not having a system that needs to be rebooted all the time is because it, it's, it's generally good using its system resources. So generally speaking, these two like virtual machines will not need to have to be rebooted um, if you have to reboot your modem or your router. It will realize the internet's down and then fix itself when it sees the internet's back up and running. Now, if you're running into any issues, such as let's say your DHCP server is serving out IP addresses, but you can't get out to the internet, you might want to try rebooting your clear OS first, then the smooth wall. Or if you're running into issues where such as like a YouTube or stuff, stuff of that nature is not working properly, you want to reboot your smooth wall um, because of the fact that you could have something in the, uh, in the content filter area that might be broken. Same thing that I was saying earlier, if you remember from the smooth wall uh, uh, video that I did where I was talking about changing the configurations to your content filter. If at any time you see that you made a change onto the content filter and the filter is not working, such as you added something to the whitelist, you added something to the blacklist, or you checked off a different box to block content, then just simply reboot the smooth wall. Uh, you can do that by just clicking on this little guy here and it'll send a shutdown command and then double clicking on smooth wall here and it'll turn it back on. Or you can just do it from the smooth wall GUI. There's a little button there um, that says reboot smooth wall and you can click on that as well. Um, but uh, those are some pretty basic things that you guys can do to just keep everything clean and running smoothly. I have yet to run into any real issues running this kind of deployment. I've been using it for over a year now. It's been very stable for me. Now this one here that I just created here for this Udemy course, I'm actually going to give it away to a friend of mine because uh, you know, he's got he's got kids and stuff and he's just really tired of getting different things saying, oh, you know, there's a new virus out on the network and stuff like that. And not everybody has the money to buy like all Macs for their household. And even then, Macs are now being discovered to come come with viruses coming on to them or whatever. Same thing with tablets and, and, uh, and your smartphones. So he was really confused, didn't know what to do. And I told him, hey, you know what? I'll build a machine, I have some spare parts and I'll just give you a box to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this bad boy down and uh, give him a call and hand him over his uh, brand new content filter slash firewall. But I hope you really, really enjoyed this uh, video series. Make sure you tell your friends about it. Make sure you uh, uh, let me know what issues you might have run into. I'd be more than happy to help out. I'll put a link in the description of this, you know, this video series on all the links that we used, uh, the forum that I have for you to ask me particular questions and uh, links to any videos that I might be making into the future. So, in all things, guys, thanks for everything. And I'd like to end this video. If I don't talk to you soon, well, I guess I'm just going to talk to you later. Bye now.